With another round of heat on the way, make sure you stay hydrated, but do you know exactly what's in your water? Well, there is this issue of PFAs, more commonly known as forever chemicals. They are found nearly everywhere, like in water, air, and soil. Recently, the EPA announced federal regulations on those chemicals in drinking water. So joining us now to break it all down is Dr. Lisa Patel with Stanford Healthcare. First, doctor, can you tell us exactly what PFAs are and how this regulation could possibly help? Sure. Uh, PFAS, as you mentioned, they're forever chemicals. They're per and polyfluoroalkyl substances. And they're carbon and fluoride molecules that are really tightly bonded. And so it works well for certain products, like things that we need to be nonstick or things that we need to be waterproof. But because these chemicals are so tightly bonded, it also means that they don't break down in our environment. So they are now in our drinking water, in the dust in your household. Um, we can inhale it. It's in many places now. Right. So what is the impact if someone is exposed to this? So um, we are only now beginning to understand uh, what the effects of PFAS are. And, and part of this is that companies like DuPont that have long been making this chemical, they've been doing health studies back since the 1960s. But those studies weren't released to us until there was a lawsuit. Um, more and more, we are, as the more we learn about PFAS, the more concerned we should be. So what we have good evidence for is that PFAS results in things like increased cholesterol, lower response to vaccines, pregnancy-induced uh, hypertension, lower birth weight in infants, um, and in cases of higher exposure, things like kidney cancer as well. Right. So if we're talking about the potential exposure to PFAS, what are steps that we can all take to try and limit that right now? So as you mentioned, the Environmental Protection Agency did pass a new rule to try to get PFAS out of our drinking water. Um, we And so what, what it asks municipalities to do is to monitor it and come up with plans if the level of PFAS is high to get it out of the drinking water. This is only 20% of our exposure, however. Like I said, PFAS is found in so many different products. So anything that is stain resistant, and this is often your carpet, your couches, upholstery, um, if you have Teflon, non-stick pans, it's found there as well. Um, so you, you can be exposed to it in a lot of different places. So checking, to, checking the labels of things um, to make sure that it doesn't have PFAS, for example, is one way to our limit our exposure. You can buy um, point-of-use filtration devices. Now, you need to make sure that they're actually filtering out PFAS because most of the filters up till now aren't actually fitted to get rid of PFAS itself. Okay, Dr. Lisa Patel, thank you so much for that advice. We really appreciate it. That's Dr. Patel with Stanford Healthcare for joining us this afternoon. Thanks.